Hello everyone, I'm Christina McCauley. And I'm Danny Hitt, filling in for Kyle Kittleson. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Orange Slices. We have another great show lined up for you. That's right, slices of life about the terrific people, places, and things that make Orange County such a great place to live. Coming up, a former Huntington Beach mayor launches a campaign to get kids to take a stand against bullying. And also on the show, we'll meet the dynamic couple behind a fun new fitness program. Even people who hate going to the gym love the new routine at boot camp. But to get things started, hey Danny, did you ever play handball as a kid? <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> you know, I couldn't wait for recess to hit the blacktop. I used to play a pretty mean game of handball back in the day, too. Well, you should have stayed with it. These days, tournaments and professional competitions are on the rise, with hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money at stake. And guess what? One of the world's largest is right here at home. In fact, I'm off to Fountain Valley to check it out. I will see you on the court. Great. Sounds good. I can't wait to check it out. You know, I'll just uh, be here, I guess, hanging out, wondering what could have been as a professional handball player, you know, traveling the world. Getting rich on all that sponsorship and prize money. Oh, I could have been a contender. Well, let's check out the real pros over at the U.S. Open of Handball. It's one of the oldest sports in the world, dating back as far as ancient Egypt. Most know it from its humble beginnings on the playground. But the rising popularity of handball is taking this simple game to world-class competition sport. It's actually going to be a, a uh, experimental sport at the next Olympics. So we're getting a real opportunity on the global stage to show the magic of handball. We have uh, Mexico, Ireland, we have Canada, United States. Our one world players are from Colombia. Uh, so we're from all over, really. And it would be a great thing for the Olympic Committee to pass so we can become an Olympic sport. Every year, one of the largest handball tournaments takes place right here at home. Fountain Valley has become the host city for the Simple Green U.S. Open of Handball. We're having a great turnout, best uh, field talent from all over the world. Tournament sponsor, Bruce Fabrizio, is the founder of Simple Green. Bruce's love of the sport actually goes back to his football days. He was a pro player before building his cleaning products empire. His coach made handball part of the team's training regimen. Right very near here at UC Irvine is where we had our, our training camp for the Southern California Suns. And Tom Fears made all the defensive backs and linebackers play handball to learn how to back up and move in different directions and use both sides of your body and both hands at the same time going forward as fast as you could. So it was a really interesting dynamic on, on actually how to improve my football. As his football days came to an end, his love for handball grew, and so did his company. Almost simultaneously, as I stopped playing football, I transitioned into handball and rugby on the side, and my business was just getting started, that was the late 70s. Through tournaments, Bruce met Naughty Alvarado, who was climbing the ranks as one of the world's top handball players. He had won more than 60 professional titles. In 1990, he started running a handball classic at the prestigious Los Caballeros Sports Village in Fountain Valley. Today, Bruce and Naughty have joined forces with Simple Green as the lead sponsor. Cash prizes now amount to $200,000. We have the venue, and we have the sponsor that is really paying uh, attention to what the handball player really deserves in the world. Well, I'm standing in California uh, in the sunlight. I'm competing with uh, the best players, not only in Ireland, but in America and, and in the world. The popularity of the tournament has not only opened doors for professionals, but newcomers as well. And handball isn't just a man's sport. More and more women are moving up the ranks and proving to be fierce competitors. I like playing. I like seeing what I'm capable of doing by myself and how I'm able to keep up with the guys if we play games at parks and just improving my game and then going to tournaments and playing. People seeing me and they're like, oh, she's a girl. Like, they don't think I can play at first, but then when they see me, they're like, oh my God, you play so amazing. I discovered handball when I was younger because my sister used to play handball first. And then I picked up a ball one day. I went on the side of the house where we were living at and started hitting the ball. I loved the way it felt. So I said every day I got out a little bit more. Every morning I would practice, practice, practice. 
basic categories in handball based on the number of walls used on the court. One wall would be the most simplest version of the game. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so simple, so straightforward. You have one wall and you've got to keep the ball inside the lines. So it's a bit like tennis with a wall. Um, then you have the three wall, you have the outdoor, which is mainly played outdoor. And it's a little bit more complicated because you have the side walls, you have different angles. And then you progress to the four wall game, which is indoor. You have the roof, which is playable, and you have the back wall, kind of similar like squash. Well, one wall is really, the Mecca is in Ireland and in Europe. Uh, but three wall and four wall, specifically four wall, I would say the United States is, is in the lead on that on a, on a national, on a global basis. The rules are fairly simple, but the speed of the game makes it extremely challenging. Okay, like other ball sports, you're trying to make the ball bounce legally in play two times on the ground before the other guy can retrieve it, okay, and you win the rally that way. You only score when you're serving. You need to score 21 points to win one game. It's two out of three games. If each player wins a 21-point game, there's an 11-point tiebreaker. On the serve, you gotta stay in the box. You gotta hit the front wall serve, and you gotta make it past the short line. And after that, if the ball bounces twice, it's a bad ball. And you just gotta keep it in between the lines. Even before there were opportunities to play professionally, handball thrived especially in big cities, where there were few sports fields, but plenty of walls. The simplicity of the sport makes it possible to play just about anywhere. I think I started just because it was a cool thing to do with my dad, and then as it went on, we started going to tournaments, and it just seemed to be a good group of people. I started playing because uh, my father, he, he started a coaching program uh, back home in Ireland, um, in, our, in our club. Um, so. I, I just started playing with all the other kids and my brothers. I was eight years old when I first came across handball. Uh, my family, you know, they grew up uh, playing handball, you know, for recreation. And I was always around, so I, I just basically just stood playing the game. Timbo Gonzalez grew up in the Bronx and went to one of the worst high schools. It was easy to find trouble. He was even stabbed once. But his skills on the court took him away from gangs and drugs. Now at age 23, he has a promising professional career and is ranked among the best in the world. I have every title in the One World Game so far. I'm ranked number one in the world. Um, I even uh, I went to Cali, Colombia and played for the Olympic Committee. And I actually won a medal over there, so that's another big title. I, I, I actually won the Simple Green last year. Last year, I won the uh, World Cup Series, the whole pro stop. I've won, uh, I have over 20 uh, yellow jerseys. I actually won um, the Vegas tournament three years in a row. I've been the finalist on the Simple Green tournament, and I've won another maybe seven or eight um, first places of um, WPH tournaments. I've taken a lot of tournaments. I was on New York City top for like uh, about a good 10 years, maybe 10 to 12 years in my career. Um, I settled down after I had my son, but I'm still back in the game. I'm, I'm now just now getting back into competing. I actually won the gold medal for the United States in Ireland. Yolanda Monroe has a special tenacity that's allowed her to achieve an unofficial title. She's the oldest of the female competitors today. In fact, she's more than twice the age of most of them. But at 51, she has no plans to slow down anytime soon. I'm going to keep competing at this age, at 51, and I think I'm competing on an excellent level where I can hang out with the ladies and I'm the oldest one that's competing. So yes, I am going to keep competing because I know that I'm going to get back on top where I need to be at. A lot of my friends that don't know how to play handball, I bring them along and they go, oh, I'm gonna try this, but I think you just need to start as a kid, like every other sport, when you just, it's just in you as a kid and you go, oh, I like that, and you just start playing. And you develop, t if you have the talent, then you can be one of the best. Me and my brothers, me and my cousins, uh, friends, we would go up there and play after school, before school, uh, at the weekends. You know, we, we played there all the time, in the evenings, at night. Um, so I think that's what, that's what made us good, that's what made me good, you know, that we could invest so much time and, and effort into it. It was all about practice. For me, it's a full-time. I actually train every day. Uh, if I don't get to play, I'll go work out, you know, jog, and then uh, I try to play as much as I can. Bruce and Naughty also hope to grow the field of competition by encouraging recreational handball. One of their key pitches is the training benefit for just about any other sport. It requires you to use both sides of your brain, both sides of your body, 
you have to be equally as strong with both hands. So I don't care if you're going to go into mixed martial arts or if you're going to play soccer. This is such a great sport for conditioning and for lightning quick decision making. It's one of the very few sports you really have to use both sides of your body equally. You're swinging at the ball with both hands, the footwork and all. Why I love this game also is because it takes out, like if you're stressed or something and you play, by the time you finish, you've already forgotten what you were stressed about. Bruce's company also has an outreach program to bring handball to underprivileged schools. We provide thousands of outdoor handballs to elementary schools around the country to introduce them with a videotape on how to play the sport. And for a lot of schools that don't have budgets for PE anymore, it's a really wonderful uh, avenue for the teachers to get the kids out on the playground because all I have to do is have a wall. It's a positive influence, you know, it keeps the kids out of trouble, you know, give them a good workout. If I hadn't started playing handball, I don't know what, what I would be doing now. I don't know, my time is just handball, practice, my family, that, that's all for me. I would love the sport to be in the Olympics. I will, even if I'm not able to play in it, I'll probably, I would love to be a coach. I would love to be a trainer. I would, I would just want to be involved. I'm just glad there's people out there that they're willing to put their time to, um, to make the sport grow. I love that handball is a growing sport, great new opportunities for young people. Okay, moving on to our next slice, this one is about kids taking a stand against bullying. Here's Christina from the campus of Huntington Beach High School. Thousands of high school students have taken the pledge. By signing their names on posters, they are promising to be a buddy, not a bully. That's the name of a campaign started by former Huntington Beach mayor and city council member Joe Carcio. It was important to me because I see a lot of this happening. You know, I coached baseball and football at the high school, uh, baseball for eight, almost 20 years, and um, football for 10 years, and you saw the bullying going on. Really, I think everyone kind of gets bullied throughout their lifetime, regardless of who they are, what they're involved in, who they're friends with. I, whether it be like a small magnitude of just getting something said to you in the hallway, or whether it's a personal attack from a bunch of different people. Well, you can't put 3,000 kids on a campus anywhere and not have incidents of bullying. Books and movies often portray the bully as the tough kid that takes your lunch money. But bullies of today are no longer stereotypes. You would think a lot of times that it's the kid who's low academic, you know, achieving. Uh, it's the kid who had, comes from a problem family. And that's not true. We've got kids that are AP students. We've got kids that have come from amazing homes that are college bound. So what's changed over the years? The internet. Cyber bullying is now a problem that can start as early as elementary school. Kids think they can bully easier on social media because they're hiding behind something. Back in the day, a kid bullied you to your face. He was in your class calling you a name, he was on campus calling you a name or getting in your face saying something. Now they can bully long distance. There's no face involved. I can say mean and cruel and untrue things to people by hitting a send button. When I was in freshman year, I had a group of friends that I'd known since I was little and they started hanging out with people that weren't really doing the nicest of things and they ended up turning on me, calling me names, spreading things on social media. And it was really hard for me. I almost switched schools, I got a schedule change to get out of their classes. And then I decided that I was gonna turn to sports and my family and I ended up meeting a lot of interesting and really fun people on my sports teams and they became my best friends and they still are today. Personally in middle school I was sought out by a group of girls and I was, um, I was bullied over social media which resulted immediately in all my social media accounts. And I actually considered switching schools in middle school because of it. But um, I think with good friends and good people that surround you, everyone can overcome something like that. While some who've been bullied are able to get the help they need, others suffer in silence. Parents and school administrators strive to do their best to stay ahead of the problem, but the lightning speed of social media makes it extremely challenging. Because now with Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and other things that they have that I'm sure we haven't even caught up on yet, uh, it's constant. 
The first step on a school campus is to make sure everyone knows the rules and consequences. My definition of bullying, at least here at Huntington's campus, would be any comment you would make to a student that would make them feel uncomfortable. And sometimes that's very minor and we can just alert you that although you didn't think that made that student uncomfortable, I'm here to tell you it did and therefore I would expect you not to repeat that. And I think a large part of that is for small comments, kids because of the environment they run in or their home life or whatever, that was acceptable. That's acceptable amongst their friends, it's acceptable in their home. It's not acceptable amongst other kids' friends or their home. So you have to educate them as to what's appropriate or isn't appropriate. Some of it's very inappropriate and it's, everybody knows it's inappropriate, but occasionally you'll get a kid say, what? I, what did I do? What did I say? Across the country, there's been a greater awareness of bullying through various programs and campaigns. What's unique about Be a Buddy, Not a Bully is the peer-to-peer -peer connection. Carcio wants to get teens talking, so he brought in the Huntington Beach Youth Board to organize campus rallies. We went to Marina, that was our kickoff, and then we went to uh, Huntington here, and then we went to Edison, and then we finished up at Ocean View, and approximately about uh, three or four thousand kids signed the pledge. Is we don't present an authority of the so-called stereotypical principle uh, pending down on the student. What we present to the student body is a more an aspect that kids can get together and we're telling them all right just think about this twice and we're we're kids we know what's happening and we just want you to think twice before doing it and that signature that's showing something and that's saying that you're signing into this program. I mean I really think that teens helping teens is a more effective way than adults telling teens what to do and so I think if they're help being told by people in high school sophomores seniors it's more effective than a, an adult saying you do this, you do that, because we know what they're going through, we can empathize and sympathize with them. You know, you have these assemblies and adults are telling you that it's wrong, but it really doesn't hit you until it happens to you, your friends. The be a buddy message may sound simple, but it works. It encourages teens to think before they act. And for those who've suffered the fear and shame of bullying, just one buddy can make all the difference. I had one really, really good friend in middle school who st stood by me the entire time and she was just there with me every day and we just hung out and she was just a really good influence on my life. She still is. We've been friends now for like six years. So I think that as long as you surround yourself with positive people, I think there's a way to overcome something like that. And I think it's important to show people that they're not alone and that they have people that will be buddies for them when they're being bullied. Carcio's hope is to extend the program to middle schools and even elementary age. He reached out to the Huntington Beach Walmart and they've agreed to cover the cost of giving away t-shirts at all of the rallies. Shelly Trujillo is not only the store manager, she's also a mom. And the message of this campaign hit close to home. Especially in you know, middle school and high school, that's such an influential age group. Um, they can, a lot can happen and a lot of, um, a lot of changes happening with students. Um, and I don't think that they realize that what bullying at this age can do to an adult. I think that by holding them accountable, signing something, giving them a t-shirt that they can take home, it's not just at school, it's, it's farther than that. And when all of their friends are involved too, I think that it makes a bigger impact than just telling someone not to do something. They're actually promising not to. The good news is that here at Huntington Beach High School, most reported cases of bullying, even cyber attacks, are successfully resolved. Uh, in the rare cases that we can't, where the issue has gone back to eighth grade and before and, it, and it's just not going to stop, uh, we tell the students if it doesn't, we will transfer them to another site uh, because that's the only solution we really have. And we tell them it's never the student being bullied who gets transferred, it will be the person doing the bullying. And while social media has led to an increase in the scope of bullying, it has also provided greater accountability. Because when they do bully, we tell students to take screenshots as soon as it comes to you, take screenshots. And then parents will send us screenshots. So we have evidence. We know what phone number is coming from. We know who said it. And so it, in some ways, it's made it easier to bully, but it's also made it easier for us to catch them. Bullying will always be a part of adolescent life to some degree. That's why this campaign and continued support from the community are needed to keep the problem in check. And if you're a parent, don't be surprised if your child has already been a target or even a bully. My advice to parents would be take a look at your kid's cell phones. And even though I have a lot of parents who say my kid would never do that or I would be surprised that my kid would do that, they should never be surprised at anything their children will do because the best kids sometimes make bad choices. 
I have a job because kids make bad choices and I'm very busy. So, I mean, it's just look at their cell phones, be aware of who their friends are, and, and deal with it at home if you can so it doesn't get to this place. Now for our last slice, if you hate going to the gym, you're not alone. But here's a fun new workout that has people taking on a whole new kind of fitness routine. Here's Christina reporting for Boot Camp. After we finish all five stations, minute and a half rest, and then we do it one more time. Sam Joyner knows how to work a room. He and his wife Xenia own Fit Body Boot Camp in Fountain Valley. Pictures of proud clients line the wall. Not only is Xenia an owner, she's also a success story. So this is our wall of fame, as we call it, here at Fit Body Boot Camp. And I'm also on the wall as well because I was a client and this is my before and after picture. The best thing that I've gained out of this program is my health and my happiness. She was all excited about boot camp. That had me kind of curious to figure out what is, what's really going on, what's this about. Like a lot of people, Sam had belonged to a big name gym and wasn't familiar with the boot camp concept. Xenia convinced him to give it a try and it didn't take long before he was sold. Just the way that it was ran and how it had that community feel, everyone was enjoying the workout, high fives, having a good time. And then I could see why she enjoyed it so much uh, because it really, besides having that accountability, people were actually having fun with the workout, people that normally wouldn't. It's more of um, a fa family atmosphere, you know, it's like a one-on-one -on -one experience. Even though there's, you know, 20 or 30 other people in the group, I feel like I'm the only one here sometimes. Back when Xenia was just a client, both she and Sam were on track pursuing careers in line with their college degrees. Social services for Xenia, engineering for Sam, but success in the job market was taking its toll physically. I was in a very stressful, um, work environment and you know it was very high demand lots of clients um, you know not feeling appreciated a lot of the time so um, that kind of put on the weight as well because when you're stressed you put on extra weight and then if you're not eating and drinking the right way or you know you're not maintaining a healthy diet you, it just comes on faster she had embraced her new path to a healthy lifestyle and began wondering if her time would be better spent helping others do the same. She told Sam they should quit their jobs and start a gym of their own. She was all gun ho about it. I took some, took some time convincing. It took a couple months, uh, looked into it, did our research. Now they have a thriving new business. Sam is a natural instructor, and Xenia has a knack for marketing. In no time, they had a solid client base. They also joined the Chamber of Commerce. I love the fresh, young enthusiasm of, uh, of new business owners. Uh, and also, they, they are amongst, uh, I'm not gonna say the few, but they really understand how a chamber membership should work. Call me nosy or maybe ambitious or whatever it is, but I just started asking questions and meeting the right people, getting to really know um, what I could do for my business and for the community. In order to get value out of your chamber membership, uh, you need to be able to be involved and participate, and they understand that. So uh, is on several committees and they are out in the community. Fit Body Boot Camp is a franchise that was started in 2011 and has already grown to nearly 300 locations. We get a lot of guidance and um, business marketing from the franchise, but at the end of the day, we do have the flexibility of um, running it the way we want to run our business. And for this couple, that means taking boot camp to its full potential. Our program encompasses 
um, nutrition and also the workout. So they're supposed to work hand in hand. If you only change one thing, you're not gonna get the results that you want. Xenia has even authored a recipe book of favorite healthy meals, which she offers free to clients. She also uses social media to encourage nutrition challenges. For example, posting pictures of smart menu choices when clients are dining out. And everyone at boot camp keeps a nutrition log. So we can actually see what they're eating, what their water intake is like, um, and we tailor it to them and you know what their lifestyle is, if they're a busy mom, if they're in school, um, how to meal plan. Sam and Xenia have been able to win over clients who've either had bad experiences at big gyms or just plain don't like the idea of working out. I hate the gym. <laughs> <laughs> and I vowed that I would never, ever join another gym. I hated it. Um, I had it for several years, um, probably out of the 10 years that I had a membership. Um, consistently, I went for about two years, um, but it was very routine. I'd work out for two hours, not break a sweat. 45 minutes, you're in and you're out. So we have five stations, two exercises at each of the stations. 30 seconds of doing each exercise, followed by just eight seconds of rest, just enough time for you to get to the next exercise at your same station. Sam loves his new calling. He brings the same energy and enthusiasm, whether he's leading class first thing in the morning or the last class of the night. Sam, he's awesome. He's like a great motivator and he challenges you and he works with you if you're not doing it right. Sam is an amazing trainer. He stays on us, you know, he makes sure that the workouts are, um, that we're, we don't limit ourselves, that we push ourselves through every workout. The difference mainly is uh, personal training. I mean, the personal touch. Because Sam keeps you motivated, he keeps you going. Having people smile, saying, oh wow, you know, thank you so much, you know, I had a good workout, I lost, you know, X amount of pounds, and you know, just people that are, you know, giving us these amazing testimonies. Boot Camp brings together people from all walks of life, and here they are family. Antonio Jaime served in the Mexican military. Training is in his blood, and during class he's always helping and encouraging others. Well, sometimes they, they don't do it right, and that's what I came to know. You have to do it this way, and do it this way, and do it this way, and you're gonna get it right. So if you don't do it right, you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself. The exercise routines change with every class. We have metabolic and strength days. I like metabolic. I like our hurricane workouts. And um, I mean, this sounds crazy. I, I hate them, but I love them. The squats and lunges. I can start off with my least favorite is the ropes. I don't care for the pike ups um, just because it's an uncomfortable position <laughs> and I don't feel like I'm flexible enough to pike up all the way. But um, I like the new agility ladders that we just got in. Those are awesome. I don't like the ropes, but we learn to love them. Um, other than that, nothing, just kind of everything. You work your whole body, not just arms, not legs, just every day is cool. It is fun. Every time you come in, you never know what you're gonna get. And that's the great thing about um, this program because your body doesn't have enough time to get used to a specific workout or exercise. I mean, after the workout, I mean, you feel so good. I mean, that's what keeps me coming back. You know, there are other things that get in the way, like work and family and stuff, but I really miss it when I don't come. I always try to make it here somehow, even if life is going on. I know that after my workout here, I feel like a whole different person at the end of the day or end of the night, whatever it is. Sam and Xenia left stressful jobs to start this business. And even though they're actually putting in longer hours than they ever did before. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day and however many seconds there is in a day. Staying fit and healthy and helping others do the same makes it all worth it.
Welcome back. Hey, sign me up for that boot camp. That looks like a blast. And don't you just love Sam and Zenia? I mean, quitting their careers to open a gym and inspire healthy lifestyles. Yes, and I was also impressed with those students being buddies and not bullies. You know, kids are much more likely to listen to each other rather than their parents or teachers. <laughs> Definitely. And how about that first story? Any dream of still becoming a pro handball player? You know, if you start training now, you just might make it to the Olympics. Mm, I don't think so. You know, I'm not really quite ready to give up my day job for you. <laughs> Well, that's fine, because I miss working with you. Aw, shucks. <laughs> well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Orange Slices. Remember, if you have an idea about something or someone that would make a great slice, let us know. Find our Orange Slices page on Facebook. We would love to hear from you. Until then, I'm Danny Hitt. And I'm Christina McCauley. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Orange Slices. We have another great show lined up for you. That's right. Slices. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Just thought we'd get the uh, get the uh, outtakes out of the way first. <laughs> Finally. It's gonna be a show of all outtakes this time. <laughs> hey, Danny. Did you play handball as a kid? Oh, heck yeah. You know, I couldn't wait for recess to hit so I could hit the blacktop. I bet. Well. That is totally screwing up. Sorry. I totally like. <laughs> I couldn't wait for recess to hit the blacktop. And okay. then he looks at me, yeah. and I'm like, nope. No, no, don't look at me. Nope. Go back. Go there. <laughs> You're not. And I played a mean game of handball back in the day. I did. I did. <laughs> it's true. Liar. I just, I've never touched any sort of sporting type equipment ever in my life. Find your mantra. I love that hand <clears throat> that I need to clear my throat. <clears> throat> Here we go. <clears throat> me, 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 me. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> hey, sign me up for that boot camp. It looks awesome. And don't you just, uh, wait, he hit my hand. I did. You did, did you guys I see I thought that? we were gonna dance. Is this like, the part where we dance? Like bad. Champs. I mean, quitting their careers to open a gym and inspire healthy lifestyles. Yes, and that was a weird yes. I don't, let's. <laughs> That was... Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Welcome back. Hey, sign me up for that boot camp class. That looked awesome. Yeah, and aren't Sam and Zenia just cool people? I mean, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Oh, it turns out we do need another take-up. Like, am I seeing a little peek-a-boo? Okay. Hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you want your next Orange episode? slices oh, after dark. Not with Danny here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's an outtake right. show. Yeah. All right, Starring. here we go. All right, okay. I think we're good on outtakes now.